Perfect. <laughs> OK, everybody. Hello, and welcome to the Share Site Customizations live session. My name is Eric Vindlev. Uh, I've been with Alfresco since 2008. I uh, used to work at the office, but now I work from Sweden instead. Uh, I am a member of the UI team, uh, so obviously I do a lot of work with the share and the customizations. Uh, maybe some of you saw the tweet that went out a couple of days ago uh, that said that Eric Vinlove is not scared of customizing share live. Uh, it was the marketing department that sent out that tweet. Um, they never asked me if I was scared or not, uh, but the fact was that they were actually right. So. I'm not scared because I'm just going to do the talking and push this little button here. Dave Draper, on the other hand, uh, should be the guy that should be scared because he's going to do all the heavy work. So I'm just going to guide you guys through what he's actually doing and he's going to sweat behind his keyboard. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to do today. We are going to look at the different possibilities that exist when customizing share. Uh, we're going to show you that you can create a unique user experience. Uh, we're going to show you how you can organize your code when doing customizations. And we're going to highlight the different extension points that exist in Share. Um, come on. <laughs> we're going to do that by uh, creating three different demos. Uh, and each demo is going to be backed up by an extension module. Uh, we're going to do it live. And the ultimate goal of this is to make it possible for you to create your own uh, site customization in less than an hour. But most importantly, I want to mention that Sweden uh, won over England with 4-2 in the football games this afternoon. Slaten did a penalty uh, bicycle kick like that, 25 meters from the goal uh, in the last minute. Um, just. Just some side info. You'll be fine on your own when you work. I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> OK, so uh, before we actually start doing this, uh, Dave is going to show the latest community release of Alfresco to show that we are starting from scratch. OK, so hopefully you can see my screen. Um, as Eric said, this is a, uh, a completely uh, fresh 4.2 community installation. It's not a developer build. You could do, I, uh, before the, uh, the Berlin session, I went and downloaded it. So I just want to show you a couple of a quick things. Um, just to show you the module deployment page, which you might have seen a couple of times, um, just to show you there's no um, extension modules that are already there. I'm not going to be just sneakily uh, dropping stuff in. I'm also not going to be copying jars across. Um, but I am going to be genuinely um, doing this completely live, although you'll notice that I don't do a lot of typing. Because we've rehearsed this a number of times, um, there's not really anything for anyone to gain with me making a typo. So typically what I'm doing is I've actually got a lot of the code, and I'm sort of, but it's only little snippets and I'm copying and pasting it. And you will be able to download all the code and the examples to see exactly what it is I'm doing. But um, we did have lots of ideas about how to run this, but, and, and we just thought this was the best way just to give you a flavor of, of what's possible. So anyway, so I'm in, um, I'm in uh, Share here. I'm logged in as the admin. I just want to show you a couple of things uh, very quickly. If I were to go to create a site, you can see that I've only got one site type as normal. Um, I want to show you a couple of the users we've got, uh, just because I've, I've pre-set up some users here. So what we've got uh, is we have got, uh, first of all, we've got Eric. It's the only name we could think of beginning with E, who's going to be an editor in our story. Um, we've got Alan, who's an author. And we've got uh, Patrick, who is a partner. And also importantly, uh, because this is going to come in um, later on, I'm going to show you that we have a, a group called Partner Group, of which Patrick is a member. And he's the only member of this group. Um, so and just also to show you this very quickly, I'm going to go and uh, just going to create a new site. Um, I'm going to call this uh, vanilla. And I'm just going to create it, just so that you can see that when we create a site, this is all completely genuine. This is share as you'd see it out of the box. Um, here's the document library. Nothing special at all, really. And when my document library loads, we have to say, there you go. So I'm going to hand back to Eric now, and he's going to explain what it is that I'm going to do during the course of this session. All right. Thank you, Dave. <coughs> OK, so what we're going to do is uh, show you a demo of a use case um, that involves the Acme company. So the Acme company, they have a research and development department. 
Uh, this department wants to manage their own projects. Um, and in these projects, their editors um, will be able to publish articles that the authors have written before. Uh, once a pub an article becomes published, it means that a partner to the Acme company will be able to log into Share. Uh, and in but instead of seeing the usual um, Share UI, they'll get a complete unique uh, user experience. So they will get a small partner portal where they can see the different uh, research and development projects. And they will be able to click on one of the projects and then go into the um, uh, into that project and list the different uh, published articles inside that project. Uh, as David said, uh, the costing for this demo is Alan, the author, which will uh, create drafts, article drafts, Eric, the editor, which will publish uh, the drafts, and then Patrick, who will log in as a partner and then see the, uh, the, part, uh, the portal. Uh, so before we delve into the code and look at all the details, I just want you to uh, lean back and relax, and don't worry too much about the details of the code. Uh, you'll be able to see that afterwards anyway. So just try to get the main picture. Okay, so in the first step, in the first demo, uh, we are going to define our research and development projects, and we're also going to make them available inside of Share. Um, so we are, of course, going to use a Share site to represent uh, an R&D project, but we want the R&D project to be uh, unique. We want it to have a certain uh, pages displayed, uh, certain dashlets, uh, and we want some of the document library actions should only appear inside the research and development project sites. So we need some way of distinguishing the R&D uh, projects from the normal collaboration sites in Share. So to do that, we are going to use a thing called site presets. So a site preset is actually a site config template. Uh, it's a, te a config section that allows you to define a site's dashboard. Uh, the number of columns on the dashboard, uh, which dashlets that should be there, the default pages for the site, and also other stuff. Uh, so for each site that you create, this config template is being copied. Uh, and when you're inside the Create Site dialog in Share, uh, you usually select the type of site that you want to create. What you actually choose in that dropdown um, is the preset ID. So that is the ID to the config template. Um, so when you create the site, that uh, config template will be copied, but also the preset ID will be stored on the site object in the repository. And that's a good thing, because then you can use that preset ID as a site type ID, and then key off customizations uh, that will only be available when you're in a site that has that preset ID. OK, so let's take a look at our uh, preset for the research and development projects. Uh, so this is how it looks. First, we just give it an ID. Uh, then we define the different pages that should be available inside the research and development projects. Uh, in this case, we define a custom page, an introduction page, and we also include the good old document library. So in the properties section uh, inside the presets file, uh, you can define your custom properties if you wish. Uh, so what that means is that other components can read these properties um, and it could also update them. So that's exactly what happens with the site pages property. The collaboration, uh, uh, the navigation component for a site um, is actually reading these properties and render th rendering them as a link. And then when you go in and change the pages that should appear on the site, that property is the one that is getting updated. So if you wish to add in your custom properties there, uh, feel free to do that. Um, also, the preset is since version 4.1 of Alfresco. Uh, you can add in as many presets as you wish, uh, and they will get automatically picked up as long as you put them in the site data presets directory. OK, so now we have this preset that includes the introduction page and the document library page. Let's now take a look at the actual introduction page. So what we want to make, uh, we want to make it possible for the site managers inside the research and development projects to write an introduction message or uh, an introduction message for the users of the site. And to do that, we are going to reuse the wiki component. So therefore, we're creating a, a page, and we're saying that this page should have a, a template that only has one column. This is an out-of-the-box template that is available in Share. Uh, that template also has a region, uh, and in, 
in regions are uh, areas on, on a page into which you can bind in components. So the one column template has a region called column. Uh, into that region, what we want to do is add in the wiki component. So we do that by specifying the URL to the wiki component. Um, OK, so you would also need to add in the title component and the navigation component on this page to get it fully working. But that um, doesn't fit this screen, unfortunately. Um, so we used a one column template, uh, but there is also other out of the box templates. So since version 4.0b, there is a different uh, variations of the two column templates, and there is also a three column template. Uh, and you might see all the links on all screens. So if you wonder, if you want to read more about any of the things that I'm talking about, just follow the links to, um, uh, that are available on the, on the screens. OK, so now we have the preset, and we have our custom introduction page, and we are using the doc document library page. Now we want somehow to make it possible for the, uh, our R&D projects to show up inside the Create Site dialog. So to do that, we are going to use an extension module. Uh, we're going to use the customizations section of an extension module. So let's first take a look at what an extension module actually is. Uh, so they were introduced in version 4.0 of Alfresco. Uh, and what happens when a page, uh, a page is rendered in, in Share, Spring Surf is uh, first identifying which page to render. Uh, the template that should be used for that page uh, is finding all the different regions on, on inside the template, and then it's binding in all the components uh, and running all the uh, web script components. During that step, a lot of, um, during some of those steps, it's possible to actually hook in your own customizations. So that's what an extension module is for. So if we take a look at um, the actual extension module, it's an XML file that is placed inside the site data extensions directory. You can name it to anything, uh, dash extension XML. It will get automatically picked up. And one extension XML file may include uh, multiple modules. So, uh, but to make sure that these changes that you specify in, inside a module actually take effect, uh, you can specify an evaluator. So if this evaluator returns true, then all the changes that you specified inside your module will be used. So let's take a look at what's actually possible to do inside an extension module. Well, inside the components section, you can add and remove and replace components uh, inside a region on a page. In the configurations section, you can uh, specify just the usual kind of config that you would pl place in your share config custom XML file. But if you would place it in the share config custom XML file, it will always be used. Uh, but if you place it inside the configuration section, it would only be used when your evaluator returns true. So that's uh, going to be heavily used uh, in, a, in a couple of minutes. And lastly, it's possible to use the customizations section to uh, make it possible to enhance individual templates or web scripts. Uh, and after they have been run, it w will be possible uh, to change their uh, message properties, uh, the JavaScript model before it hits the free market template. Uh, you can change the markup that is being returned from a component or a template, and also add in additional client-side resources, such as CSS files and JavaScript files. Um, uh, and the different module evaluators that are shipped out of the box, you can of course provide your own ones, uh, are the following. So there's the site one. Uh, the portal one, which returns true if you're inside a portal, and groups where you can use, uh, uh, where you can uh, see what, which groups the current user has and then decide if the module should be used or not. All right, so let's take a look at the actual extension module that we are going to use to make sure that the create site dialog uh, will get the research and development project listed inside the type dropdown. Um, we are specifying, we are using the customization section uh, and what we're doing here is that we're saying that when a web script inside the org Fresco package is being run, let's also look for custom, uh, enhancements inside the Acme R&D customizations uh, package. So as a concrete example, uh, we're looking at the create site uh, JavaScript controller for the create site dialog. The only thing that it's actually doing is uh, creating an array which contains the different presets that should be listed inside the type dropdown. So as you know, usually there's only one, and that's the site dashboard one. 
So what we are doing now is that we want to make sure that that array actually contains two values. So we're doing that by inside our Acme R&D customizations package. Uh, we are mirroring the, the remaining path to the file that we want to enhance. So uh, once our JavaScript controller is being run, uh, the site presets array will al already have uh, one value. So the only thing we need to do is just push on our custom preset onto that array. And that's about it. Yeah. We're ready okay. for the first demo. <clears throat> OK. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log in as Eric, our editor. Um, and I'm going to create a new site. So um, the extensions that, as we go through, are, start off sort of relatively modest and going to get increasingly more complicated and um, interesting as we go. But uh, as Eric was just saying, what you can see now is if before I only had one option for a site, but now I've got the choice of a research and development site. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to create this new site. Um, and I'm going to call description. This is all about green energy. And I'm going to go ahead and create it. And what you'll see when the site uh, is created, you can see um, the dashboard. If you're obviously familiar with what the standard uh, site dashboard looks like, it doesn't have these dashlets in it. It has different ones. You can see that the dashboard, the default dashboard is slightly different. And you'll also notice that in this list along the top, we've got a new page type, which is the introduction page. If I click on this page, um, you'll see that it's uh, effectively just a, a wiki. And I'm going to edit it because I have um, access to do that. Um, and I'm just going to give it a title. Welcome to Green Energy. Um, and just save that. And then whenever people go to that page, they'll see that as a, as a wiki component. And uh, that is uh, the quite modest start. Oh, no, I'm going to do one more thing. I've forgotten to do one more thing. Very important thing here. Um, I've got to add add someone to in, in invite the site. So in the next part, I'm gonna, we're going to be seeing some differences for different users. So I'm going to um, need to invite Alan, who is our author. And I'm going to add him as a collaborator. And I'm going to invite that. And uh, I'm going to hand back to Eric, who's going to explain what I'm going to be working on next. All right. So um, I mean, it wasn't very much that Dave no, did, no. but it was still quite a lot. So how quick is he? Is he, was he able to do that all uh, in just five or 10 minutes? Uh, he probably would, but he's also very smart because he's using the site extension project, uh, which is available on Share Extras on GitHub. Uh, and using that will, is, a, is a quick way of getting started doing Share site customizations. It will basically create a fully working development environment, uh, providing sample data and, and the most common uh, use cases for customizing shares, uh, at least in the sites. So by simply typing in an ONT command uh, with this company name and, his, and the use case, he will get this uh, environment working and fully namespaced. So we can add, use it multiple times for different um, extensions. So for share, what he'll get is uh, build targets for production and, uh, and development, uh, get a spring context file with some evaluators, uh, a message properties file, a site preset, uh, a sample page and a sample web script using the uh, best practice uh, uh, code. Uh, also get some extension modules and all the uh, most common Doclib customizations, all fully namespaced and which later on can be used to um, build your customizations on. And for the repository, he'll get uh, more or less the same. He'll get the build targets for production and development, a uh, spring context file that adds in the con a sample content model and also a sample repo action, which will make it possible to update um, the content model on, on the repo from share. So none of this is required, of course, but it's a good way of quickly getting started um, and seeing how things, how the code should be organized, uh, for instance. All right, so let's take a look, quick look at how we're going to model this use case uh, in the repository. We are, uh, of course, going to use uh, so we have this notion of research and development articles. So that is going to be represented by having an R&D article aspect. And when that aspect is applied, it means that a document is an article. Uh, it also means that the document has a new property called research and development status. And that could be set to two values, draft or published. Draft is the default value. Um, to update that value, 
uh, we can call a repo action that will uh, simply update the status property to become published. So that's basically all we need on the repository. Uh, an alternative solution to this could have been to use folder rules. So uh, for instance, if you in share would uh, create this folder rule on a drafts folder. So let's say that you have a drafts folder that would be a designated folder for drafts. And when an author comes along and drops in a document into this drafts folder, you would make a folder rule kick off an action, uh, which then would kick off a, a simple reprove and eject workflow. Then the editors would come along and either reject the document as being a, um, as being ready for uh, for publish publishment, or they would approve it. Then you could specify that if they would approve it, the document would be moved into a published folder, and then you could make your partners read only documents from that published folder. Um, that's not for today though, because we're uh, focusing on share site customizations. So let's start step two. So what we're going to do is make it possible to publish the articles, uh, also make it possible to see the article information inside the document library, and we're also going to slim down the uh, share UI for our editors in the research and development projects. So to publish articles, we are, of course, going to use a doclib action. Uh, that action should only be available for the editors, uh, and in our demo, we're using the site manager role inside a site to represent an editor. Um, and also, these actions should only be available when you're inside a research and development project. Uh, to do that, we are going to create a new extension module, and this time we're going to use the configuration section inside an extension module. So let's take a look at the extension uh, module that we're creating. Um, this module has a, is using an evaluator, uh, which is uh, of type site module evaluator. It makes it possible for you to key off customization based on site information. Uh, we are using the site presets parameter, uh, where we're saying that when the user is inside a site that has the um, following site preset, we want the changes that we define inside this module to be used. Uh, it's also possible to uh, target unique sites using site IDs, and it's also possible to narrow down it a bit further using groups, which means that the evaluator would only return true if you're inside a certain uh, site, and the current user also is a member of uh, one or more groups. You can also set the relation between these groups uh, if you want the user to be a member of all of the groups or just one of the groups. All right, so inside this module uh, and inside the configuration section, we are now going to add our uh, action configs. So that means that if we add them inside there, they will only be used when you're, we're inside a research and development project. Uh, all right, so the action that we are uh, defining is of type JavaScript. That means that uh, when you click on the action inside the document library, a JavaScript callback will be invoked. Either you specify your custom one, uh, but we are using an out-of-the-box function that simplifies uh, the work of calling a repo action. So uh, on action, simple repo action is available out-of-the-box and is used to call repository actions. So, the action parameter, the parameter named action, is uh, containing the, value, uh, the name of the repository action that we have created that will update the status value to become published. Uh, so that's all good, but now we only want this action to be available uh, when the following uh, is true. So we want the, uh, uh, the document to be an article, in other words, have the article aspect, we want to make sure that it hasn't been published already. So we're checking the status property that it, it isn't set to published already. And finally, we're making sure that only the editors or the site managers uh, are able to see this uh, document action. So um, the remaining site roles are, of course, also available as out-of-the-box uh, evaluators since the latest community release. Um, and if you don't want a, a JavaScript callback to be called when you click on a document, uh, doclib action, you can specify it. Instead of specifying, specifying it to be a JavaScript action, you could just specify it to be a link or a page link to take you to a certain page in share or some other uh, destination. And as a reminder, uh, 
note that there are URLs on almost all screens where you can read uh, more about every, everything that we're talking about. OK, so now we have our extension module, which is only being used uh, when we're inside a research and development project. We've added our action. But now we also want to add, uh, make sure that we can display the information about an article. So to do that, we're going to use an indicator and a metadata template inside the document library. Um, once again, this config is placed inside the extension module uh, that is only used when you're inside the R&D project. And it's fairly straightforward to create an indicator. Uh, you just specify the icon that should be, dis be displayed. Uh, and we're also saying that this icon should only be displayed when the document is, uh, has the article aspect. In other words, is an article. Um, if you want to override a, uh, an indicator that we have provided out of, out of the box, you can use the override element. And you can also make an indicator uh, do something special. Uh, in other words, invoke a callback by using the action attribute of an indicator. Um, OK, so now we have the indicator. Now we're going to specify the metadata template. Once again, we're saying that this metadata template should only be used if the document is an article. In other words, has the article aspect. If it has, then we would like the following lines to be displayed underneath the title inside the document library. So first we're saying, um, let's display the date of the document, and let's display the size of the document. So date and size here are actually metadata template renderers that exist in, docu in the document library out of the box. If you want to, you can register your own. Um, and it's also possible to uh, simply render a property value, which is done uh, at the second line. So first, we specify the name of the property that we want to render, which is R&D status. And as a second argument uh, inside the curly braces, we are uh, specifying the label that should be displayed next to the property value. So the document list will actually first look for a register render. If it doesn't find one with that name, then it will uh, consider it to be a property and inspect the node for that property and simply render it. So in our case, the R&D status is just a string, so it will just be displayed as is. Uh, but it's also possible to uh, specify a property that is an object rather than a string. And before the latest community release, this was just rendered as object in, in, uh, in braces. Uh, but in the latest community release, it will actually, if you specify an object, it will actually inspect that object and look for the username attribute. If it finds one, it will render a user profile link. If it finds uh, some other attributes, such as the ISO 8601, it will render it as a date, and so on. And if you want to do more complex stuff, you can, of course, register uh, a custom render. OK, so now the final part. The, our editors in, inside the research and development department, they, oh, they don't like that documents filter component up in the left corner. So they want to get rid of it somehow. We are going to help them doing that. And we're going to use it, uh, do that by using the component section of an extension module. So once again, inside the same extension module, uh, we are adding the following uh, config. Uh, but we, uh, yeah, we're going to use, um, we're going to create this config. But to create this config, we need a certain, uh, certain values. So first, we need to target the component on the page that we want to hide, and also where on the page that the component lives. So to do that, we're going to use the Spring Surf, uh, Surf bug tool, which you can find at the following URL. So if you uh, navigate to that URL, enable Surf bug, you will be able to see all the different components on a page highlighted uh, with a red border. Then you can click on one of the components, uh, which will bring up uh, additional information about that component. And we are particularly interested in four values. Uh, first, the component ID, which is default. And also, where on the page uh, the component lives, which is specified by the region ID, source ID, and the scope. So we take these four values, and then we add that into our extension module where we will say, uh, we'll make sure that the documents filter component should be hidden. So first we say that uh, inside the filter region on the document library page, we want the component with the ID of default to not be rendered. But we only want it not to be rendered when the current user is a site manager. 
So in here, you can also specify evaluators that decides if this config actually will be used or not. Uh, and there are a, a number of different out-of-the-box evaluators uh, that are available. You can read more about them by following that link. Uh, and it's also possible to use this technique to add in additional components inside a region and also re replace components. Okay, time for the second demo. Okay, <clears throat> so this time I'm going to log in as Alan, who's our author. And if you remember, he was invited to join the Green Energy site, so I'm just going to accept that invitation. And I'm just going to make a favorite site so it's easier to get back to. Um, Uh, first of all, when I go to the document library, you'll notice, well, I say hi, when Alan goes to the document library, um, you'll notice that he still has his um, this documents uh, component because, or this filters component, because he is um, he's not a site manager, he was only invited as a collaborator. So what I want to do now um, is I actually want to go and uh, upload some documents into the, into the document library. So what I've uploaded here is um, we've got two images, a document, a Microsoft doc, um, Word document, and we've got a PowerPoint presentation. And if you look down here in the uh, the options that we have, um, we now have this option to make uh, the article an RD article now. So what we want you to pay attention to is both the indicators up here and also the metadata that's displayed. Because as I, if I can control my mouse, um, when I make it an RD article, you'll see that it's switched now, the metadata is updated, we've got a little status indicator, um, and the metadata has been described. So I'm going to go and I'm going to do this for the, uh, all of the other articles. And you'll see that they all, they all change. But you'll notice that um, I can't do anything else with them at the moment, because I'm only an author, I'm not an editor for this site. And you can see because they're all still in, in draft mode. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to log out. And I'm going to, or Alan logs out. And Eric is going to log back in. And when Eric logs back in, because he's the site manager, he's going to have some different options that are available to him. So you'll notice that uh, because Eric is the site manager, You'll also notice that the, uh, the filters now disappeared. And also, um, when I click on the options, because he's an editor, or rather the site manager, he also has the option to publish articles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish um, one of the uh, images, and I'm going to leave the other one unpublished, but I will publish the, uh, the document and the presentation. And you'll notice that, having done the options now, you'll see that it says published in the metadata, and the hover help indicates that it's been that it's been published, and uh, that concludes this portion of the demo. All right. Okay. So all the stuff that we've done now is fairly common uh, doctor customizations, and and what, we, what we've done is actually tied it to a specific site. Uh, a lot of the stuff has been provided by the site extension, so feel free to check it out. So now we're actually moving into the more complex stuff. Uh, so what we're going to do now is uh, implement this portal, the partner portal, where the Acme partners will log in. And instead of seeing the usual dashboard as a landing page, uh, they will actually see this very simple portal, which will list the different research and development projects that has been created. Uh, they can navigate into one of them and see the document library for that project. And they will only see the published articles. And when they click on the title of one of the articles, they will only see, uh, they will actually see the content of that file rendered in line and instead of be taken to the document details page. Uh, so uh, how are we going to solve that partner pro portal problem? So when the user logs in, they are always taken to the dashboard. So what we are going to do is to heavily customize the dashboard page template. Uh, so instead of sh showing the usual alfresco header and footer and all the dashlets, what we want to do is just add in our custom partner title component and a component that lists the different research and development projects. When uh, the user clicks on one of the projects, they will be taken to the document library page for that site or that project. Uh, 
Same thing will happen there. We'll heavily customize that page template and make sure that none of the usual components are visible. Uh, instead, we'll show the same custom partner title component again, but we'll keep the document list, but we'll customize it and make sure that it only displays the published articles and also that it will uh, render the content in line when uh, the document is clicked. Okay, so uh, how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to create our third extension module. This one is going to use the group module evaluator. Um, <coughs> The evaluator accepts two parameters. Uh, one is groups, uh, which may contain a list of different groups. And then you can set the relation between those groups. So if you use the re group relation and, it means that the current user has to be a member of all the groups. If you set it or instead, uh, the current user would have to be a member of one of the groups. Um, so inside this module, if this evaluator returns true, the following customization will be used. So now we're targeting the templates. So what we're saying is that when a template inside the or org fresco a package is being run, then we want our, uh, make it possible uh, to also look for enhancements in the Acme R&D customization partners package. So let's take a closer look at how this is working. So this is a snippet of the dashboard template. It defines uh, HTML development, which specifies three different regions into which uh, components will be bound in. These are components that we don't want, uh, so we need to get rid of them somehow. Uh, we also can see is that there is a markup element that has an ID. And the only uh, job uh, for a markup element is actually to define a section of the template or a web script component, which then can be targeted in the customizations. So we can use that ID of the markup ID to actually add in additional uh, markup before or after it, or we could replace that markup. That's what we're going to do. So inside our package, the Acme R&D Customization Partners package, we are mirroring the remaining path uh, to the file that we want to enhance, the dashboard template. And then we define our own markup element. Uh, in which we are using the target attribute, which means that we're targeting the original markup ID, and we're saying that we want to place our markup after the original markup. Um, then we are removing the original markup by once again using the target attribute, specifying the original ID, and then we're setting the action to be remove instead. So using this technique, we can remove different sections of the template and add in our own markup into the template. And then all we need to do is bind in our own components into those regions. OK, uh, so this is the technique that will be used to actually uh, make a completely uh, new uh, look for the partners when they log into, the, uh, into Share. Um, now we need to solve the problem of only having published documents being displayed inside the document library. So we're going to use the same technique as the records management module is using, uh, if you have seen that. Uh, but first, take a look at how the document library is, is working. Um, so when, the, uh, when you're inside the document library, uh, the document library is calling a web script in Surf to get the different documents that exist in a folder. It's not contacting the repository directly. The reason for that is because the Surf doc list web script in Share uh, will will contact the repository, get all the documents, but it will then also add in the different actions and indicators and metadata that should be applied on each document. Uh, and when it calls the repository web script to get the documents inside a folder, it's actually uh, not doing that by looking at a hard-coded value. Instead, it's consulting a spring bean that is defined inside the data URL, URL resolver element. So it's using that spring bean uh, to get the URL that it will use to contact the repository. So we need to, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cust uh, create our custom web script inside the repository that will return all the documents. Uh, we will implement that by importing uh, more or less all the files from the usual uh, doc list uh, web script, but we'll override a function that will make sure that we only are returning uh, documents that has the status set to published. So now we have this custom web script in the repository that returns what we want. Now we need to make sure that the document library uh, is using our web scripts. And we want to make sure that it's only using it when the partners have logged in. So to do that, we are 
overriding the data URL resolver element, and we're pointing out a new custom Spring Bean instead that will return the URL to our custom web script. Uh, and we're not uh, adding that inside a shared config XML file because that means that it would always be used. Inside, we're, instead, we're placing it inside the extension module, which means that it will only be overridden when the current user is, uh, is a member of the partner group. So quickly, let's take a look at the Spring Bean that will uh, point out the repository web script. We can use uh, the, the default Java, Java class. The only thing we need to do is specify uh, the base path property to point to our web script instead. Uh, and we are in our extension module, as I said before, uh, overriding the data URL resolver element and pointing our, our web uh, Spring Bean to be used instead. OK. I also said that we're going to, um, how's it going, Dave, by the yeah, way? You me when you said OK there, but it's a <laughs> Is it all right? Yeah, getting there. OK, right. OK. Um, so we are going to specify the inline previewer as well. Uh, that's the thing that's going to make it possible to, when you click on a document um, uh, title, instead of going to the document details page, uh, we are going to show the content of, of the file inside the document library. Uh, this is usually done, uh, or this is done, <laughs> by specifying uh, a new view render to the document list. Uh, perhaps you saw Ray Goss' uh, session uh, before this. How many of you saw that one? Excellent. Then I don't need to dwell into the details of how to do this. Uh, but if you didn't, if you weren't there, uh, feel free to take a look at the, uh, the sessions from uh, uh, from uh, race, uh, the notes from race session. Um, all right. And oh, okay, cool. Right. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't change. And we're ready for the third and final demo. Okay. This is where the magic happens. Uh, right, so before I get onto the really cool stuff, I'm going to just log in as Eric again, just so you can see that um, I've not replaced this with an entirely new application. Um, so still got share as we expect. I'm going to go and I'm going to create another site, which I'm going to originally call another site. Um, um, some more stuff. And this is going to be another one of our uh, research and development sites. And then... Um, I'm going to go back into the document library, and I'm going to uh, stick a couple of my favorite Microsoft sample pictures into, uh, into the doclib. I'm going to make feedback. Yeah, don't stand too close. <laughs> <That'd be> my <laughs> fault. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make these. Um, and I'm going to make. My, I can see, you can see as, as Eric is also a collaborator, he's able to not only um, um, make the article, oh, sorry, publish, you can also make the articles um, R&D as well. So I'm just going to do a couple of them quickly. Um, and then, oh, I can work this. So, okay, so now we've got some more content to work with as well. So I'm now going to log in as, um, as Patrick. And because Patrick's the partner, we want him, as Eric was saying, just to be able to view this content. So here we go. So when I log in as Patrick, this is what Patrick's dashboard now looks like. Check the URL if you can, can read it from where you are. This is still share. This is still Patrick's dashboard as, as you'd expect. Um, we've just, as everyone was saying, we've just ripped everything out and we've replaced it with our own stuff. So if we, we can see that we only see the, um, the two sites that were created with the um, RD preset. We're not seeing the vanilla site that we created earlier. If I go and look at a particular site, so if I select the green energy site, uh, you'll see that we've only got the published articles. If you remember, there were, there were two images. I only published one of them. Um, and if I click on it now, you'll see that you can actually see the, um, the previewer in line. I can actually go and view, view all of them. So there's, uh, everything's showing up in line. Eventually, when it decides to work. So yeah, I can do all the usual things you'd expect to do with it, except this is just the um, exactly what we want Patrick to be able to do, um, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. All right, yeah. Um, 
All right, so let's sum it up. What have we done? Well, we've created this R&D project sites uh, that are unique to the, uh, to the research and development department. Uh, in them, you can, in them and only in them, you can uh, draft and publish articles. You can display the article inf information inside the doclib, and we also slimmed down the UI for the editors, hiding certain components. Then we created the partner portal, uh, which only uh, listed the research and development projects, changed the UI completely, and also only displayed the published articles. And we did this by using uh, the notion of site presets and also extension modules. So now it's time to uh, start worrying. Um, if you are interested in talking to me or Dave, uh, feel free to sign up for the engineering hours tomorrow. You can find the slides and the code uh, that we've done to implement this on that URL. Uh, please visit our blogs and try out the site extension project uh, to quickly get started doing your customizations. The thing is that when Dave's been doing the demos, I have also been uh, creating my own site extension using the site extension project. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a small competition. So I've created this custom uh, site type, which I've called the DevCon competition site. So we're going to have this competition. You did this last time. You didn't select it. <laughs> <laughs> then it. Oh yeah. Did you? Did you select? Did you select the right site? No, I, I didn't. Tell you, he did it, and you think he learned from when he was in Berlin, wouldn't you? Everything went so good time. the last time, so I thought I would repeat myself. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> And last time, I call this the second project. Let's compete again, which I'll do once more. And this time, I'll actually choose the DevCon competition side. So the job for you is to guess what the component on the page that I'm about to show actually does. <gasps> Real prizes this time. <laughs> uh, last time, it was beer. Free bear for the for the winner. This time it's free uh, Swedish candy cars, uh, all fresh and tasting very good. So uh, the person, nobody from Alfresco or from the DevCon in Berlin, uh, are allowed to compete. Uh, so the first person that knows what it's doing, just shout out what it's doing, and you'll get these very nice candy cars. All right. Yeah, Woo! there we go. That's it. Good job. I always dreamed about doing something like this, so I'll toss it. All right. Good job. OK. Questions? Yeah, thank you very much uh, for attending this. Do you, is there anybody who have any questions about something? Every, Oh, <laughs> in a couple of minutes, hopefully. <laughs> Everything was super clear. Yeah, I think the important thing, I'd just like to say, uh, the important thing to take away from this is just that we were really trying to show you what you can do with share. And really, um, you know, the limit is kind of just what your imagination to a certain extent. So, yeah. If you have any, if you have to start working on stuff and you have problems, um, then definitely use the forums, like Eric said, and, and we'll try and help. We're pretty responsive. Um, to try and help people solve their sort of customization problems. All right. Thank you very much for listening.